Planet Magazine. <laughs> also known as Wednesday 13. Welcome to Room Planet Magazine. Welcome to Room Planet Magazine. This is all gone from a video. Welcome to Room Planet Magazine. You will see the Room Planet. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's DJ Pierce here from Drowning Pool, and you listen to Room Planet Media right here. Get yourself. Hey, I'm Steve from Within the Ruins, and this is Room Planet. Greetings, Brutal Planet. We are live today with Raven Chain from the band Sister Kill Cycle. And I apologize for the delay here. YouTube like threw me some weird error, so I had to go wire things back up on the back end. But it looks like everything's live and functional now. So thank you for the your patience. And uh, thank you for taking the time today, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. It's no problem. I'm just you know, catching up on having some drinks here. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So uh I listened to the new record uh Blood Money Death today. Uh great stuff. A couple standout tracks. Um I really like the song Black Widow and uh Land of the Gun, I think was yeah. was the other one. Yeah, and then of course the cover you guys did of uh Iran by Flock of Seagulls. Because that song, and I, I kind of touched on this a little bit before we came on, but like I like that song, but his voice has this kind of like nerdy quality to it i guess so i like the kind of like dark edge you guys put on it thank you thank you so much uh yeah that was it was always like you know a kind of a favorite song of mine like like growing up and like you know being a big fan of like 80s music and 80s synth pop and stuff like that and uh um what really inspired me to want to cover it is back in the day when uh vice city was coming out and uh you know Rockstar Games that had that commercial everywhere, and you just saw the commercial in like the 1980s and the Miami vibe, and it's like, it's like you know what? I really love that, and I kind of miss that that vibe and that era that was happening because it was it, it really such a cool time in history. Um, so I decided I, I'm going uh, I'm going to go ahead and cover it. Um, got a hold of the uh, the singer for Flock of Seagulls and uh, actually asked his permission before we did anything. And uh, he gave us full blessing and rights to go ahead and record the song. So um, we did it, of course, you know, uh, in our own style. We could have went a lot more dark with it, but I wanted to, to like maintain like that, that 80s, you know, club mm -hmm. synth pop sound. Uh, but like you said, of course, I'm no Frank Sinatra, so you know I add <laughs> some grit whenever I take the mic. So, yeah, I, what you said about that whole like kind of synth wave era too, like that that's that's so, I, that totally stuck with me too. Like that, uh, just that like echoing guitar riff that they do that bam 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 at the beginning mm -hmm. of the song, yeah. and, the, and then that commercial, the the Vice City, just has like such a Miami, like that eighties, that whole eighties, uh, aesthetic, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm kind of partial to stuff like that anyways. I mean, if you look back, I mean, it was a time in, in, in a period in time that, uh, yeah, there were some uh, political things going on, but nobody really cared. Everybody was in a party vibe. Everybody was going to the club. Everybody was into music. Uh, you know, it was, it was a time when like the Discman was, you know, getting ready to come out. Every, everybody was like going into this, you know, modern technology that we're in right now. So it was like the dawn of that. And it was just a really, really cool time. And, uh, I almost, I almost think we're, we're, uh, coming into the crescent of, of that as a resurgence. I, I think, I think people are starting to want to find something i think that's what they're missing is that vibe that the 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 mid to late 80s had uh especially on music i mean it was so important in so many faucets of life not just like going to the club but it was on the top of most people's lists you know just being involved in music yeah there's a lot of parallels with technology too because i feel like the early eighties is when like technology and like synths and computers, like really became a big part of pop music. 
and you kind of have some parallels to that today with just the way you know music is with distribution and social media and, and the way that people can make a record in their garage or their bedroom and stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel, I feel that as well. I feel like we're right there. Um, you know, times are a changing. And uh, so uh, I, I think that's one thing that, that me and the guys in the band always try to keep touch with what we are, all about instead of being the new flavor of the week and and seeing how things go i think we've always just stuck to what we know and what we like to do and you know the last 10 years everything got like really hard everybody's into the really in you know intense metal scene and uh that's all well and good you know it had its place it had its time just like all all the genres of music have but uh you know, I'm just, I, I, me personally, I'm not about like just being the popular band. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to say I don't care about being like well known and liked. I mean, because everybody wants that. But uh, to me, it's not a top priority as an artist and especially as far as writing goes, um, which we just released this new album, which is basically a big spin on the last three albums this band has done and uh we had it remastered uh and uh you know some 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 things changed and and a couple other tracks that never nobody's ever heard that we threw out on this release uh we had tom from october noir who who did the mastering for us which he's you know very good friend of mine um, but Lots we're also in the middle of writing a brand new record. I, you know, I, we haven't really, you know, made any news with that, but, uh, yeah, all during this, we've been writing a new record. So I think the new directions of this new record is going to showcase some of that old school 80s synth, uh, club vibe. And, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it because it, it's something different than Sister Kill Cycles ever done. I'm here for it. What? So tell me the Sister Kill Cycle origin story because you guys have been around for a minute. Um, how did how did you get to where you are? Like, how did this all come together? Uh, you know this story. I, I should just have it tattooed on my face. It would be easier <laughs> that way. But uh, uh, basically. I grew up always loving music. I was in a big uh, music family, mostly gospel and bluegrass uh, up in West Virginia. Um, I've lived all over the country because I'm a military brat. So I've been here, been there all over the place. But uh, I spent quite a bit of time in uh, West Virginia with uh, my aunts and my uncles when I was younger. And and they were really big into gospel and uh bluegrass and, and a little bit of country, but m mostly gospel and bluegrass. Uh, so it inspired me to want to be in music. And then I saw Alice Cooper. I was like, that's it. That's what I was going to do for the rest of my life. Uh, I was supposed to be a preacher, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, but uh, Alice Cooper changed that for me. Um, but I, I started a band uh, when I was 15 called INRI. I'm nailed right in. And uh, basically, it was me and a couple of guys from high school, or I guess at that point, junior high school. But uh, we uh, we just started this. You know, none of us could play. None of us could do anything. I wasn't a singer. I was a guitar player. Um, so we just got stuff. And our first drum set was, you know, the classic story, pots and pans out of my mom's kitchen. And our first rehearsal was basically that, a bass player with a bass amp. Uh, guitar with a little gorilla guitar amp and uh, my drummer on pots and pans. And uh, so we, we became like a, uh, I guess you would call it goth punk because we, we had the whole goth aesthetic, but we sounded so shitty. We called it, you know, we were punk. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and, and we, we started doing that for a couple of years, you know, and, and touring around and, you know, bought a van, an old beat up van and start touring up to, you know, uh, Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania and 
all the surrounding areas, Ohio, Chillicothe and Cincinnati and Columbus. Um, until we, we finally, we started getting better with our instruments. And, uh, I saw that this might be something I definitely want to pursue. Uh, you know, fast forward to two, 1999, 2000, uh, we had people in and out of the band and we just finally got a uh, solid lineup and we changed the name to sister kill cycle. It was originally kill cycle. Uh, but everybody thought we were a hardcore band when they saw us on the flyers and stuff like that. So we had all these big beefy dudes showing up at the show <laughs> ready for, you know, kill cycle because this was not Facebook time. This was like the internet was still brand new. Mm -hmm. So nobody could just go research who a band was. And we're like, you know, uh, nothing wrong with those guys, but maybe that's not the crowd we want to attract. Uh, <laughs> so we threw in the sister to kind of soften it up from like, you know, sisters of mercy or, or even twisted sister, you sure. know, take, take that tough guy attitude and throw some makeup on it. And, uh, there you go. I, I, uh, that, that makes me think of the band Queens of the stone age. Um, oh. I think, I think Josh Homme said something similar. He's like, we didn't want our shows to just be all frat boys. So we kind of like thought that name was kind of subversive and, and it, it gave people more of an idea that like what, what, what our band is about, you know? And that, so that's cool. That, one, one of my follow-up questions would have been what, how'd your name come about? So you kind of answered it in the process there. I, I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah. So you guys just put out this album, blood blood money death did you you said you remastered it and it's a bunch of older songs and you have a new one coming that you're that you've been working on already right yeah yeah the blood money death is and it's actually uh the meaning behind the name of that is uh it's the last three albums the main albums we've done not little eps but you know um so blood being the first album massacre the guilty which we put our blood, sweat, and tears in that to try to make something of it. That was our, our first record down here in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, Money would be the Redemption Through Rebellion album, which actually saw us like, you know, starting to get somewhere, starting to get successful, uh, making some money, not huge money, but making some money. And of course, Death would be the Cross My Heart album, which, uh, that we were pushing and is when we kind of had to deal with the cancel culture thing for a minute. And, uh, so there you go. Blood money, death encompassing three albums. And, uh, like I said, we look back at some of the early recordings, like on massacre, the guilty, and, uh, we were going to re-record the whole thing. Uh, but Tom's like, uh, Tom from October noir is like, no dude. He's like, that's a period in time. You want to keep that, but let let's let's master this to get all these songs to to where they sound equally across the board on one record, and, and let's give your fans something uh, kind of like new and fresh to jumpstart this year, and then you give them the new album at the end of the year. Um, that's kind of that's kind of what we did. It made sense, you know. The guy's a very smart fellow, so uh, I took his advice. It's kind of like a like a trilogy type deal too. You got it kind of all wrapped up into one. Yeah, and ironically, uh, I sat down for the first time, and uh, I didn't arrange the tracks or anything like that. I I let Tom, you know, do all that, arrange the tracks. I sat down and listened to to the album from start to finish, and it's so weird how he arranged the songs. It, it, it almost tells a story from front to beginning. And, and it definitely, I wish we, I wish we would have planned it that way, but it, it just happened. And it's, if, if you listen to it from start to finish, it, it, it tells a very productive, provocative story. Yeah. There's a lot of interesting kind of subject matter and a, a variety of different stuff. You know, I really like some of the, the, um, kind of like the the synth effects you guys are doing too i i love when like at the beginning of that song black widow there's like kind of a cool little like synth thing and then yeah. at the beginning of i i ran the, the stuff that you guys did there i love that it's kind of like a like a gritty just like a gritty techno thing 
that yeah. very few people can capture. So, well, that's that's on on Royce Roy, our uh, keyboard sense player. He uh, he doesn't use out of the box like sounds. I mean, he he literally sits and builds sounds. So, I, I would give all the credit to him for that. He, he's try. I mean. When we're going for something deliberate, you know, he he may take something and, and tweak it a little bit. But for the most part, um, all the sounds you hear on, on our records are his sounds. He's created uh, either through software or or hardware. He, he loves hardware. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's really cool and unique. It, it adds something to the music when you hear something that it, it just piques your interest because what, what the hell is that? You know, I mean, I, yeah, I give I'm, I'm always in, I'm always looking for like new sounds too. Like I'm always impressed when I hear someone do. I'm like, oh, that's a that's a new sound, like or something that's uncommon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do, I mean, whether it's guitar, or synth, you know, I, I I I've always been intrigued by hearing stuff like that. It it, it pulls you mm -hmm. in, and you just want to you know, grab hold of it. Really cool. Unique. Sets you apart too, as a, as an, as a band kind of gives you like a little bit of an edge. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I mean, yeah, it does. You know, we, we were discussing this new, uh, you know, hard metal era that we are just going through. Um, pretty much everybody, has the same sound that that's what i have the problem with it I, I, we've actually played on bills where we're in between four or five of these bands and i couldn't honestly tell you where we were in the set when we were to get up uh, because they all sounded the same and, and again don't hate on me you guys know it's true you guys all buy the same equipment you you get the baritone guitars you detune down you use the the, <laughs> Kem, the kemper amp everybody bought a kemper you know and uh it it's not really unique you know everybody uses that pitch shifter to get those high ass yeah. you know it's so funny during the new metal era after like the post corn era we had this joke that we we would call bands dun dun we bands like, dun, dun, we, because dun, all because all yeah all there was like yeah. dun dun we dun dun we yeah I mean and again like I said I, I I can't really sit here and and knock them because obviously it was it was so impactful that here we are years later talking about it so it yeah. did do something and it affected someone which is what art's supposed to do you know yeah. and so I I can't knock it even though it's maybe not my flavor. Yeah, you, you do have a point, and there's a debate that I even had with people about like the click track and the grid and all that stuff, because it seems like in the, in the Pro Tools era, everybody's married to the grid, and it makes the music very like linear. And you know, I, I got in an argument with a guy about, about recording on a timeline because he, he, the drummer that we were working with didn't want to record to a click. And he's like, you think Zeppelin recorded to a click, you know? And I was, I'm, I was it kind of got me thinking. And then I saw Danny Carey from tool talking about it, how like, because of the timing changes they do and stuff, they don't use really use a click and it kind of gives the music some breath. You know right. what I mean? And it, and it, I thought that was such a profound way to put it because it's true. It's like, and no disrespect, I use a click track. You know, everyone uses a click track, like especially when you're recording remotely, like you have to be on the same page. You're sending files and whatever. But right. there is something to be said for, you know, just like getting in a room and jamming or just having like real instruments. You know, the, the Kemper thing is another thing where it's like people people clown on DJs who don't use records, like vinyl records, right? And the right. Kemper is almost like the guitarist version of that. It's like, Oh, you don't haul your amp around. I mean, if it right. if it works for you, it works. But you know, there's still something to be said for like a Mike Marshall or you know. Yeah, and, and I'm right in the middle, uh, and, and agree with you 100. But I'm in the middle, and <clears throat> also on the other side. Um, of course, I grew up doing punk rock. There was no click 
there was nothing there. It was just three or four fucking guys uh, just playing music. I mean, sometimes we were on, sometimes we were off. Um, that depended upon us. When I started going uh, towards a click is when we started to get more successful and work with more important people in the industry that actually were putting out these records that everybody loves and everybody hears and everybody, you know, I was taught a very important lesson. And this goes back to what you're saying about Led Zeppelin. No, there wasn't a click track, but there was a guy in the studio with a click track clapping the whole time they were tracking. So I didn't, I'm like you, I didn't know that either. You know, you listen to the old Black Sabbath albums and everything like that, but you wonder why is this album so good? Are these guys that damn tight? Yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, the click has been utilized since they knew that they had to sell a product when you can't sell a band all out of time. Of course, just, of course. You just can't do it. And people buy that up and be like, what the hell is this? You know? Uh, yeah. So, so it became an industry standard. So that grid you're talking about, the click track, I learned very early on. I was like, I want to be the best and sound the best. And I want our hits to be that impactful. So I embraced it. I, I As soon as we got to probably Redemption Through Rebellion album, uh, which I'll tell you, if you go listen to... Uh, uh mask of the guilty there's no click on that and you hear the mistakes mm. you hear the the fluctuations of timing which I, I guess some people love but when you're selling a product people are paying their hard-earned money for it you give them yeah. the best you got if you want to feel that music with your bros go in the fucking garage and start writing you know and then when you write a song put a click on to the tempo and then you 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 perfect that song, but if you want to feel something, just go go jam like you said. That that's what jamming is about is feeling. Yeah, well, and it's part of music. I mean, time signature and timing, being on time and in the pocket and stuff. It's obviously like a part of music. You know, it's like timing. It's a part is of life. It's a part of life. Everything. Yeah. Look around us. I mean, we're spinning on a on a ball through fucking infinite time and space. And I think some of those drummers, like a John Bonham or a Danny Carey, those guys have a click wired into their brain, you know? So it's like you could, like a John Bonham, you you can use his drum tracks as a click because he has such good meter, you know? Right. And, and the other thing with those bands is I feel like a lot of times those bands, like they played those songs and toured on them even before they recorded them sometimes, you know, where it's like a lot of bands today, they get in the studio and write the album before they go out and play it. So right. you have to use a click in that case where it's like, you know, someone like John Bonham who's been playing a song for three years before they record it. Like he's got the meter wired into his brain, you know? Yeah. And that is, it's, it's, it's a totally different animal. I mean, you got yeah. someone like, like Bonham, he is the click. I mean, yep. at that point you could put a click on him. It's like, dude, I, you know, unless we go into a computer, I, I can't see the fluctuations and there are some people that freaking talented, but for the most of us, you know, we have to rely on that. And and again, you hear a lot of people bitching about, oh, you're you're faking it. You got click tracks and back tracks. And it's like, no, guys, what, what we're trying to do is is give you the album experience live. You know, what you hear on the album, I want you to hear that live. So yeah, we got one guitar player, but some songs have like two or three guitar tracks and different melodies. There's no way one guy can f accomplish that. There's no way. Yeah, and it's also like uh, someone made the point that like some of our songs have arrangements like we can't afford the budget to go hire a like string section and tour with them, you know? Right, so you need so, a keyboard. Yeah. Right. So that makes sense. And it's it, again, I, I, I've had this debate with people about the DJ thing where it's like like people get, are mad at DJs using computers instead of like vinyl records. And I'm like, yo, you wouldn't make a phone call, wouldn't be mad at someone for making a phone call on an iPhone instead of like a rotary phone. Like it's just right. the technology has changed. So 
you know exactly that that's and the media has changed so it allows a dj to use i mean even i've seen them not even use compact discs i remember when they started using the compact discs mm -hmm. now CD everything's game. like wave files and mp3s yeah so to, to me that that really doesn't matter it, do, it doesn't change the talent of a dj uh to use vinyl i mean there, there is kind of a nostalgic thing to like hands on tangible. I got to change records and do this stuff. So, but again, those guys were so great at what they did back then before this technology existed, they had to get good at it. So yeah. you can't, you can't compare a DJ who's starting out nowadays with MP3s to some guy who had no other choice to have right. a, a crate of records. You know, mm -hmm. it's how the music makes you feel in the end is what's important. Yeah, I don't it does care take, how we get there. Yeah. And, and for, and there are DJs, there are plenty of DJs who have the ear who are talented, like they can match beats. They can, they can do, you know, mash certain things up that, you know, I, I, it does take musical talent and a musical ear to do that stuff. And to, even though they're just twisted knobs, like they're, you know, they're doing stuff on the fly. A lot of times, like, I, I would I would agree I would agree with that. I mean, the the ones that are really super great at it, they're they're talented, and, and they're and not only beat matching, they're they're effect matching, like an effect carrying over from one song into another song, and, and they can pick up. That is true talent. You're yeah. you're at, actually basically what you are is a producer live. Mm -hmm. at that Being point. able to read the room too, and right. know like what they're going to pop on and like what kind of music is to hit is going to hit at the right times. Like it's the talent all its own. Yeah. And, and, and ultimately I think as an artist, that's what we're here to do. We do it because we enjoy it. It's who we are. We're, we're like weird eccentric people, but it gives us an outlet and that's what we get out of it. But for who we're creating art for, this is their portrait. This is their album. This is their experience. That's that to me is why we're doing this. And otherwise I would never be on a live video. I would sit here. Nobody would know who I was. I would just create music and play music. Um, the experience is to share it with the world and, and uh, ha have something that uh, we can relate to uh, amongst each other. And it ties us in together. It doesn't matter whether you're blue color, whether you, you know, Ivy League or whoever. Music, again, whether you're DJing or playing in a band or, or, or whatever style, it is something unique that is a gift given to us. That, uh, you know, I, th I think the people that really take it seriously like that are, are the true artists of, of our world. Yeah, it's such a universal thing too. Uh, that like, it it kind of like transcends everything. I feel like like there's you go to like a, any kind of a show, whether it's you know a Depeche Mode show or a Metallica show, and you're gonna find like a variety of different people coming together for the same, you know, love of the music. All right, and, and I've I have been to those uh, you know crossover DJ shows where they'll. They'll spin some eighties Depeche Mode goth stuff like that, and then you'll get this hard hit and trance, and you know bass. And these people, they don't know the difference from each other. It, you know, it's it, it's at the same venue at the same event, and, and these people just get along because it's like you said, it, it is universal language. It's you know our bodies. You know, listen to your heartbeat. It's music. You know. If you can actually listen to your veins with a stethoscope, you know, and hear the sound, you know, it's we have music in us. It's it's almost oh. like a higher higher being, you know, knew what he was doing. Yeah, a rhythm. Yeah, there's a rhythm to everything. Nature, Nature has a rhythm. Yeah, I love it. How did you, how did you guys end up uh, meeting up with Tom in October Noir? Um. Well. If I have to be honest, it was a, it was a gay bar in, uh, <laughs> you don't have to be honest, but no, no, I, I prefer to be honest. Uh, um, 
I, I think we stopped off at a gay bar up there where he lives and he just happened to be standing there with his black leather pants and his button up and <laughs> dude i just kept looking at him it's like dude i'm gonna get that guy <laughs> i'm gonna bleach his butthole um no no in all serious um i i heard of them i knew of them i've heard of them before we ever met um obviously you know the typo covers that they had done in the past and, and everything like that which got them quite a bit of attention um you know i've got typo negative right there ah. uh, i was real good friends with peter still and the guys in the band for for years uh and uh i i don't know, tom just is so brilliant i've never heard anybody sound like peter without even trying to sound like peter um so he uh he just amazed me i started listening to to his original music i was like man this stuff this stuff is just this is as good as typo if not better i mean this is like unique and, and it's it's beautiful dark heavy every everything that i love um so we just got together and finally booked a show together uh which was down here in florida and that was first time we met up and uh, pretty much after that we we've been like you know best friends brothers since then um we do a lot of stuff back and forth you know behind the scenes uh but we also are going to do a lot of stuff together as our two bands um i think we're enough alike where we work together on bills but we're distinctly different enough to where you're not getting you know a doom show or you're not getting an industrial metal show it's like it's just encompassing like dark romantic music which i i think we do a lot of as well yeah yeah i i love some of the stuff on the new uh october nor letters to existence there's a couple songs where they're kind of branching out a little bit and i think those are some of my favorite ones because yeah. even even like Peter Steele aside, like Tom, Tom gets kind of pigeonholed as like the Peter Steele kind of knockoff. But like even he, he has elements of like Peter Murphy, Bauhaus, you know, in his voice, like old old school goth, like the yeah, and, typo. So, yeah. And he can he, he can actually sing like soft. Well, like, uh, you know, not that. And again, I hate to compare, but, uh, you know, Peter could sing well, but he, you know, speaking wise, it just came off gruff. Tom has like a, a sort of, uh, smoothness to his voice in his soft singing, uh, which makes him unique. Yeah, definitely. I think Peter had more of the, like, like, like you were saying, it's almost like spoken word when they do like that slower stuff, kind of like, cause he had that that like uh lurch voice yeah yeah all right man well we've been on for about 40 minutes now what what else you guys got going on anything else we should uh we should touch on oh be careful with that touch see we're in an interview i i, I <laughs> what, what i've been doing now is uh since i had to like you know claw my way out of this uh cancel culture bullshit that is i'm gonna say live right now in this interview anybody that uh uh, goes into this and tries to partake in this to cancel somebody's life somebody's career because you don't like them get a life because yeah. i tell you what we're more powerful than you you can't stop us we're, you're not going to stop us but my warning to you be careful what you say <laughs> the word touch can be misleading in so many different ways and somebody who just has a chip on their shoulder for you We'll take that out of context and try to cancel you. That's how ignorant this world has become, uh, which we have we've taken the assertion to we're we're not we're not going to do it. I don't care what you say about us. Take us to court when you see me in a court of fucking law, and get charged, and then get convicted of what I was charged with. Then you can say some shit. Quit with your fucking make believe fucking I hurt my feelings world kiss my yeah. ass I could not agree more with that sentiment because it's like people people 
will base their entire opinion of a person or a situation on something they heard from another person. And it, until it's prosecuted in a court of law, it's just accusations. It's just the court of public opinion. So you like until you have like a hard conviction, even even just a, an indictment or, a, you know, a, a, a something like that is just an accusation until it's proven in court. Right. By. By a jury of our peers, you know, I mean, look at Johnny Depp. We we knew this very early on as a people that uh, you know look at the the Salem witch trials witch 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 burn if she her, floats yeah. like a if she floats like a duck she <laughs> must be a witch you know burn her um, that's like my so favorite many, how many innocent people uh, you know got tortured and, and murdered murdered uh, just because of accusation she turned me into a newt <laughs> there you go Monty Python <laughs> I got better. <laughs> <laughs> got better <laughs> yeah but uh you know um I, I i think that's this year i am uh really really trying to come out of the gate especially with this new record when when when, when you and everyone else hears some of the material on this which we've already released one song off this new record it's called cancel culture of course oh i saw the single for that i, I, I yeah. wasn't sure if that was was on the album or not but it, yeah we uh we dropped a single because we thought the new album was going to be a lot quicker than it was but uh, we want to make sure it was right so it's it's still cooking um but uh yeah we're getting ready to do the video uh cancel culture with tom uh he's going to film it for us and direct it um i have to say not to interrupt you but the video that they did for a halo hung from horns is one of the best like indie music videos i've ever seen it's hilarious it's like it's fucking great so the, all the easter eggs in that video too from all the horror movies and stuff like that so I don't know if knows. and that was tom filmed the whole thing and directed it himself yeah, it, i watched it when i was building their website and i just I, a couple times and I was just like blown away. Like I was laughing through it. I was like, this is fucking hilarious. Like some of the like little jokes and stuff, like when they do the dance and stuff. Yeah. Oh fantastic. yeah. It's, it's Brilliant. fucking, it, it's great. And Pop again, song. back to, uh, you know, this, this, this whole thing that we're doing should be enjoyable. It should be laughable. I mean, there are times to take some things seriously, but not too seriously. Don't, yeah. don't take life too fucking seriously or you're going to miss it. You're going to miss the great things you're going to miss the importance of this whole ride that we're on um you know i i've been known to be quite a serious person but uh i do have humor i like to laugh yeah you, you know? got to have a sense of humor but uh yeah i mean i i i think I, we're going to focus on finish this new record uh we're going to be doing a lot of live shows this year um I don't know if we're going to do a full on tour, so to speak, but uh, I know we're going to do a lot of one offs on some festivals. Um, we, we already have like uh, those in the works. We just got to like deal with the contracts and stuff like that. Um, October Noir and Sister Kill Psycho are going to be going quite a few shows together um, throughout the rest of the year. Um, I, I can't release any dates. I know a couple that are definite in the head, but I, I can't do that yet. But trust me, you'll be the first to know. Yeah, I, I need to get out there. I, I mean, I would love, I was talking to Tom about this the other day, like long term, one of my goals with Brutal Planet would be to like start doing shows, like setting up a sh like a Brutal Planet show and getting out bands, getting bands out here that we like, maybe book a book a club like the Whiskey or something. That would be that would be great, dude. And I'll tell you, uh, there was a guy here in Florida that used to do that. Uh, he had a radio show and he used to come out and uh, even even not necessarily if he he put on the show, but he would show up to live shows and he would do live broadcasts from the show and interview each band as they came off stage right off the golf stage. So it was like intense energy. It was really cool. Um, but yeah, dude, that's a great idea. Like, why not do it like the industry does? I mean, maybe none of us have the money that uh, Virgin Records has or, you know, any of these big, you know, Sony 
Uh, but, you know, follow the idea on a smaller scale. A radio station puts on a fucking show and invites bands out. Yeah. That, that's how we build a scene. That's how we build something. I think for us, we're, we're still kind of, we're still kind of young. I'd give it like, I'd say another year or two and we'll have a big enough audience where I think we'll, we'll be able to go, okay, we can sell tickets. We can sell out the whiskey and we can book the whiskey and we can bring out the bands that we want or something, you know, I think we'll get there. We're not quite there yet, but you know, the goal long-term is to put on bands like you guys in October Noir and, and like bands that we dig that maybe aren't getting out this way. Uh, actually, LA loves us. Every, every time we play the uh, the Goth Club, there. Did you guys um, play Bar Sinister. Bar Sinister, yeah. I'm yeah. actually. Uh, That's like know, one of my been, favorite places. Been friends with those for, for guys for a long time, um, and every time we play there, we have such a great turnout and, and a great response. Um, I, I thought about, you know, relocating the band to L.A. years and years and years ago uh, because a lot of our people were out there. Um, we as you were talking about selling out the whiskey uh, back in. I think it might have been 2008, 2009. We actually sold out the whiskey uh, on our own show, which was awesome. you know, pre pretty, pretty impressive uh, for not being an L.A. band. Yeah, yeah. I, that's crazy. I'm sure I've seen you guys on the marquee for Bar Sinister in the past because that's a place. I mean, I don't go out a lot, but if I do, that's a place that I usually like to go. It's just mm -hmm. like one of the better. They, they have the be the best music. Like I can go in there in like some black jeans and like a Slayer T-shirt, and it's, it's not a problem. Yeah, you know? no, no, it's totally cool. Totally cool. And you can you can either sit in the bar side or go in the goth side and something for everybody it's like you guys you know our castle here in tampa is sinister over there for you guys okay yeah that's that i mean we'll see it's a pipe dream like i told tom right now but it's you know one of those pipe dreams that it will eventually become a reality i think well what's cool is you have you have artists like us who are willing to uh you know dedicate time and effort to help you with that so you could grow ex exponentially with some some backup like us and you know yeah, like yeah. Said, you you've always like you know been cool with me and the band and and tom and october noir it's like did it we support each other that's that's how we grow you don't grow by shining on your own you yeah grow by building a community making the earth and and the the, the foundation strong and then nothing can waver, you know. We can do whatever. I'm a big we want. people person too. I I just like working with people, so I think you know long term it's gonna. But maybe it'll happen faster than 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 I expect. You know, if if I if we have, if we really set our minds to it and we go, okay, here's what we want to do. I mean, anything's possible. So, yes, it is. Well, let's. Uh, Let's let's wrap it up, man. Um, thank you for taking the time today. Really appreciate it, man. Listen to the music; it's great. Looking forward to hearing what you guys are putting out in the future. I got to go listen to the Cancel Culture track now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been that Cancel long. Culture. It, it's actually one of my favorite tracks. And uh, when you see the video, it's it's going to be so perfect. I, I don't want to give too much away, <laughs> just because it is going to be shocking. It's going to be shocking as hell. Uh, great with tom's but, working on it i'm confident it's going to be good because like i said that halo video was fantastic yeah yeah well i mean this is it's going to be really southern swampy i how do you say it like uh people of color church gospel okay black church voodoo yep, yep. Oh, stuff. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I love it. So, uh, you know, Florida, Florida, man, Florida has been bringing some great stuff to the table the last several years. I mean, a lot of great death metal bands out of Florida. Manson's out of Florida. You guys, October Noir. I just talked to this band, The Requiem, the other day. They're kind of like a like a. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're fantastic, man. Like, so yeah, yeah. stuff happening in Florida. 
Florida just has like that atmosphere. It's like, uh, you know, you're either for it or you're not for it. I mean, a lot of people, <laughs> you know, come down from Milwaukee and they want to go on a cu cruise to Cozumel and blah, 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 and experience it for a week. And that's it. We live down here and yes, it's hot. Yes, it's freaking humid. But dude, I, I've been up in New York in the city in the summertime and about to die at nighttime because it's like 90 fucking two degrees in that concrete just holds the heat mm. I, I i think people just bitch because they need a reason to bitch i mean yeah yeah but we have water on all sides we're a peninsula we're basically you know a paradise so it florida, really also, cool. florida has some wild energy very wild energy we are the oldest state in the whole continent u.s um you know saint augustine being the old city uh, oldest city in in the whole entire u.s that's great i did not know that i yeah. did just recently learn that the san francisco mission was founded the same year that the colonies were founded though 1776 nice so there was some nice. shit going on out here on the west side too back in the day it was, it was not white people it was uh latinos but yeah indigenous yeah 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 well let's wrap it up man thank you again for taking the time uh everybody check out sister kill cycle check out cancel culture the new single listen to the record blood money death and uh and go out and buy it please buy it support us uh support any music yeah yeah watch for the when's the video gonna drop do you have do you guys have an eta or anything it should be it should be in the next month or couple months it, it, it should be not too long you're not gonna have to wait till the end of the year with the rest of the record awesome well i i told tom this before too but i'm gonna tell you please don't be a stranger man come back through talk to me when you got new stuff to talk about new record new tour new anything don't be a stranger Thank you so much, bro. That I mean, it means a lot. I love your support. I'm very thankful for your support. And like I said, what we were talking about live right here, people are hearing it. Maybe it will happen sooner than later. We'll see. We'll see, man. Uh, you definitely, definitely put it, put some stuff in my head that wasn't there before. So I'm like, yeah, maybe I could make this move faster than I, than I thought. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Thank you everybody for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Keep it brutal. And uh, check out. Such Man. a kill cycle. <laughs> He's like, cycle. I, I froze for a second. I was going to say Raven Chain and kill, Sister Kill Cycle. but Yeah, check out Raven Chain and then check out Sister Kill Cycle. <laughs> yeah. Check out Sister Kill Cycle, Blood, Money, Death, Great Record, and Cancel Culture. And we'll see you next time. Take care.